For a long time now, the world has been obsessed with SUVs. And for as long as they've been around, we've known that SUV drivers don't really use them for the purposes for which they've been designed. They appreciate their chunky looks and raised ride height more than their off-road abilities. Be that as it may, thanks to their universal success, some manufacturers have taken elements from the SUV recipe and created an entirely new class. Volkswagen started a trend with their Cross Polo that was latched onto by Toyota with the Etios Cross. And more recently, Mahindra's KUV100 has refined the idea even further. So we now have a bona fide new class of car called the Subcompact SUV, to which Suzuki has added the Ignis. Basically, this class is for very small cars pretending to be related to much bigger cars with chunky looks and an attitude that suggests they're built for more than just urban living. Of course, Suzuki already make a very small car with chunky looks and actual off-road ability. It's called the Jimny. Now, the Ignis is not a new version of that car. It's not like this thing has got low range. It's probably because it doesn't even have all-wheel drive. In fact, despite its 180 millimeter ground clearance, I'm pretty sure it would pass out the thought of taking on a 4x4 course. So, a city runabout that looks a little tough, but that's best suited to on-road driving only. It's been interesting to watch the evolution of the subcompact SUV. In the beginning, they were all based on existing models with a bit of extra attitude and body protection. It seems things have moved on from simply dressing cars up in plastic body protection to creating something entirely new. The Ignis looks like nothing else in the Suzuki lineup, and front on, it's brilliant. There is one problem with this front though, and that is that it's attached to the back. There really is no easy way to describe what's going on back here, but I'll start with odd. The Ignis borrows styling details from Suzuki's of old, like the slats in the C-pillar borrowed from the Fronte and the clamshell bonnet borrowed from the Vitara. But I don't recall any Suzuki having a rear end that was just so incongruous with the rest of the car. And that's a pity, because in most other ways, the Ignis has a convincing look. Solid, chunky, with good proportions and SUV-like attitude. The 15-inch black wheels are standard on the top of the range GLX, and there is the option for LED headlights. On the outside it says SUV, but in here, the design and the layout most definitely says city car. There's a two-tone treatment for the dashboard, there's some body colored accents, and the GLX gets some decent spec as well. There is the option for an app-enabled touchscreen, which adds some functionality to the interior as well. Aircon, USB, and a multifunction steering wheel are standard across the range, while the GLX also gets keyless operation, Bluetooth, park distance control, and climate control as part of the package. The finishes are what you'd expect at the price. It offers a comfortable space with decent room all round, and Suzuki says it has above average boot space for its class. There's only one engine option for the Ignis, a 1.2 litre four cylinder with 61 kilowatts and 113 newton meters. Gearbox choices include a manual or automated manual, which is mechanically similar to a regular manual, but there's no clutch pedal because the clutch itself is automated and the car changes gears for you. It's all very complicated and we haven't yet met one that we like, which makes me very glad we're driving the five-speed manual in here, which is very good. Decent shift action, a good set of cogs to help get the best out of the engine, which admittedly doesn't have a lot of power, but then again the Ignis doesn't have a lot of weight either. Weighing just 850 kilograms gives the Ignis a power to weight ratio of 71 kilowatts per ton. On the move, that means decent acceleration off the line, an ability to keep up on the highway, and a surprising sense of speed. All of which underscores that other feeling you get in a Suzuki. And it's something I'd forgotten about because I haven't driven a Suzuki for a while. But there is a real sense of quality. When it comes to the spec or the finishes or the design, you might get what you expect for the money. But mechanically, it really isn't underdone at all. It is absolutely solid. Everything from the power delivery to the steering to the brakes, it's all really good. The ride setup is a great balance between comfort and confident handling, and you can have a relative amount of fun through a set of corners, despite its SUV pretensions and super skinny tires. Bigger than a Volkswagen Cross-Up, prettier for the most part than a Toyota Etios Cross, and better finished than a Mahindra KUV100, at 190,000 Rand, it's also very well priced. And that means, as a package, it's kind of difficult to argue against what the Suzuki Ignis is offering.
With just 61 kilowatts and 113 newton meters, the Ignis isn't blessed with a lot of power, but its light weight means it does have an impressive power to weight ratio, which helps with overall performance. The Ignis GLX offers a comfortable, enjoyable drive, a well specced interior, and good value. The rear styling may be an acquired taste, but overall, it is a very good package.